This video brought to you by AwesomeCreatorAcademy.com, an online platform for creative professionals and entrepreneurs to learn and grow with motivation, education, courses, coaching, and more. Don't forget to check out AwesomeCreatorAcademy.com. Hey everybody, this is Roberto Blake helping you create something awesome today. Today I wanna to talk to you about some of the best video editing software of 2018. For a lot of people, video editing software comes down to preference, but I think it actually comes down to practicality, and there are a lot of options out there. The most two obvious options to debate between are Final Cut Pro and Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, if you're someone who's locked in to the Mac ecosystem, well, that choice becomes a little bit interesting because you can either go with Apple software experience in terms of Final Cut Pro. However, if you are a Windows user, Final Cut Pro isn't even an option. There are also some other options that if you are Mac only that you're excluded from. So I wanna get into that as well. Let's start with some of the software that works on both platforms. Adobe Premiere Pro is my favorite choice of video editor. In addition to the robust features, in addition to the fact that I'm in the Adobe ecosystem, the fact is that I get to choose between going with my, my Mac experience for mobile whenever I'm traveling, and then my PC desktop experience seamlessly and use the same software. So for me, working with both Windows and Mac, knowing that I have a software solution that can work on pretty much any machine is vital to my workflow and to my sense of continuity. So that's very important to me. If you're someone who is going to be Mac only, then Final Cut Pro might make more sense for you. I don't really subscribe to the debate of render times because to me, rendering is a passive task. So I'm not as interested in it, and I feel that it does come down more to the hardware and how well that hardware and software gel together and integrate. And so Final Cut Pro has an advantage on the Mac in terms of rendering times. However, I've personally seen situations where Premiere Pro does render faster. So you know, it's something that people like to debate in lab test. I just go with what my real world experience has been. When it comes to feature sets, I think Premiere Pro has the advantage, but in terms of bang for the buck cost, you could make an argument for Final Cut Pro, and there are people who want to own their software outright, whereas Adobe currently offers a subscription model. So I could see where that could come down to preference, but for practicality's sake, I like the ability to work on a Mac, a PC, a desktop, a laptop, and Premiere Pro offers me that. Final Cut is exclusive to Mac users. Someone who uses both can't go down that exclusive route. For those of you who are screen recorders, that's another benefit of Camtasia versus ScreenFlow. I love ScreenFlow and it's great software and I love its design. I think it was done very intelligently. The bottleneck is that it is Mac only. Camtasia offers very similar things but can be used on Mac and PC. And so if you're doing mostly screen recordings uh, and you're doing tutorial based content or webinar style content, then in choosing between Camtasia and ScreenFlow, that's something that you have to consider. Are you ever only going to be working on a Mac or are you going to work on both a Mac and a PC? It will affect your decision. When it comes to live streaming, and this is something I need to do a dedicated video for, the two options in my opinion are OBS, which is Open Broadcast System, which is an open source software, and a lot of YouTube streamers, a lot of Twitch gamers use it, but I prefer Wirecast Studio Pro, and I do um, have that. Uh, Wirecast did give me a license for that, but I was a paid user before I had a relationship with them. So I use that software to do my live streams, and it works out really well. I love the convenience, the ease of use, the documentation, the frequent updates, and the stability. Now, it is expensive compared to open source free software, but I feel that you do get what you're paying for. Let's pivot real quickly to budget software. There are a lot of budget solutions, but a lot of them don't play well on both Mac and PC. In terms of these budget solutions, I really like CyberLink PowerDirector. I also like Corel Video Editor. But if I have to give an edge between the two of them, I would go with CyberLink. One of the things I really love about CyberLink is the different formats and the options that gives you. I have a license for that um, as well. I bought Corel Video Editor. Uh, CyberLink hooked me up with their latest release. And so I actually like both of these software, but I'm gonna give some of the edge 
to Cyberlink because when you do screen recordings with that, it's in, I feel, more adaptable formats. So that's kind of where my preference there lies and I like some of the options. I also like their robust tool suite that they have. I like that they actually have something for action cams for GoPro people to be able to like edit their footage a little bit better. So those are things that I've considered as well as its ability to edit 360 video. Another budget solution that does play well on both Mac and PC, whereas Corel and Cyberlink are Windows only, um, I like Adobe Premiere Elements. Adobe Premiere Elements is something that I own just because, and uh, I don't really need it, but I need to do training tutorials because people have made a request for that. And with Adobe Premiere Elements, you basically have the majority of the tools you need from Adobe Premiere Pro, but it's cheaper, you own it forever instead of paying a subscription, and it does work on both Mac and PC. So in terms of a budget solution in that sub $100 category, I think that it's a great option. I also think that it's great that you could bundle it with Adobe uh, Photoshop elements and then you have pretty much everything you need to do your visuals in terms of photography, video, and graphic design uh, for you know under $200 and I think that's a great option especially for people who are online video creators whether they're using YouTube or they're doing edited content for Instagram or Facebook. I think if you're a marketer that this will not feel overwhelming in terms of something that you have to learn if you are not really that tech savvy. So I feel like it's probably the best overall budget solution. When it comes to mobile video editors uh, for your smartphone, there are a lot of them that, again, are either Android or iOS, and that's really frustrating. Adobe Premiere Clip works on both, and I really love that. You also have Adobe Spark Video. In the Apple ecosystem, I feel that they are better video editors overall, and I feel that one of the best ones is probably Luma Fusion. It is more expensive, it's not free, it's 20 bucks, whereas Premiere Clip and Spark are free. Um, and I also feel that a really good one that I have to mention is Clips. And this one is really good for those of you who do Instagram video, so I would definitely recommend that you check it out. Clips, Splice, these are actually really good. On the Android side, I'm going to recommend uh, the Cyberlink uh, mobile video editor, and I'm also going to recommend uh, Filmora Go, and Filmora Go works on both, I believe, Android and iOS, so those are some options for you. Something that doesn't get brought up a lot uh, when it comes to the video editing software is the motion graphics and animation stuff, and I feel that for animators, Toon Boom is really great and it's affordable. I also feel like Anime Studio is a good solution as well. When it comes to motion graphics though, Adobe After Effects is the best that there is. If you're someone who's in the Apple ecosystem, Apple Motion is great and it is wildly affordable by comparison, but Adobe After Effects has set the bar really high and they are an industry standard. And then with the Adobe Creative Cloud, After Effects, Premiere Pro, Adobe Audition, uh, Adobe Character Animate, these things work really well seamlessly together and can work with assets from Photoshop and Illustrator. You can make animated puppet characters. I just think that in terms of raw power, the Adobe ecosystem wins when it comes to this video editing and so on. So I think that it's something that people can't ignore. I understand the subscription model makes people uncomfortable, but I just feel like the value really is there. But there are alternatives, of course. Now there are a lot of things that deserve an honorable mention here. DaVinci Resolve is amazing and it is something that is free or affordable if you want to upgrade and its color grading engine is phenomenal. There are all people who like Lightworks, I'm just not a fan of it, I just feel like the interface isn't great. And I'm sure there are other great open source solutions out there, I'm just less familiar with them. I just prefer to use the paid software because I like the streamlined experience, the stability and the quality and I'm willing to pay for it. This is the list that I came up with for the best video editing software of 2018 and my reasoning behind why I like these individual pieces of software and how I think that they can work for you with regard to your video editing workflow. But I'm very curious about what your thoughts are on video editing software. Are there pieces of software that are really great that I have left out and that I haven't mentioned? Are there solutions that work for you for very specific things? I would love to know in the comment section. Let's try and help each other out and answer some of the questions that people have with regard to video editing. I also wanna know what other video editing tutorials you guys want from me in the future. I wanna reveal more of my process and my workflow and not just on the video editing side, but also more about the settings for specific cameras and camera gear. I've been thinking of trying to 
to make some lightweight, not overwhelming, not overly technical user guides for some of the cameras like the Panasonic Lumix GH5 that I have, my G7 for those of you who are on budget, the A7R 3 which I love as my photography and cinematography camera, my Sony A6500. There are just a lot of cameras that I use for different things and I would love to give you guys some perspective on what my settings are, why I use these cameras in certain situations versus others, and I just need to know what questions you want answered when it comes to gear and also when it comes to the software and the tools around online video. So leave that in the comment section. I will definitely use it to inform some of the videos that I make going forward for you guys. Anyway, I hope you guys got something out of this video. Like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other awesome stuff here on the channel. As always, you guys, thanks so very much for watching and don't forget, go out there and create something awesome today with whatever tools you happen to have. Take care.